สวัสดีครับ uh, very good afternoon to um, all the distinguished speakers and the guests here uh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here today uh, representing Delta to share our case study of success um, we are very well aware that uh, adapting to a transforming landscape is a challenge not only to Thailand but also is a global issue so whatever we are going to share today as a Delta case study It's just uh, our humbly, humble sharing of uh, what we have went through, and uh, hopefully it could help the manufacturing uh, industry in a way. Yeah. So uh, the challenges or opportunities, which is the key topics that we're going to to discuss in today uh, Thailand challenge uh, seminar. So um, just now, Kun Wisit has actually brought up actually all the challenges that is facing the world today. And I shall cover two of the issues here: geopolitics and also climate change issue, which is probably the most serious, having the most serious impact to the manufacturing sectors, uh, especially for electronics. But like all businesses, if we want to talk about uh, trying to create a niche, trying to create a potential for business, it's always digging through. The challenges to find the opportunities. So similarly for Delta, uh, from our perspective, what we can see um, for Thailand, the challenges, uh, the two very serious challenges is first the global trade tussle. We don't like to use the word trade war, so we use trade tussle. So uh, what are the challenges that we are facing uh, because of the two big powers um, trying to outdo each other? We are looking at a supply chain polarization and also disruptions. This is affecting especially uh, electronics manufacturers. Um, definitely, is one of the most serious impact. We talk about uh, key components. We talk about uh, semiconductors. Yeah, but then, what are also the opportunities we see from Thailand is that because of this uh, big trade wars, then we we have this Belt and Road Initiative from China. We have this Indo-Pacific. Um, Indo-Pacific Economic Framework from the U.S., which was uh, announced recently, but both of these mega programs actually included Thailand. So Thailand, in a way, are facing lots of challenges like any other country. But I guess Thailand is fortunate enough to be also included in all these opportunities that are coming. And also, not to mention, because also of this trade war. We are looking at a lot of reshoring opportunities to Thailand. Also, however, for Thailand to actually compete with the likes of Vietnam and the the surrounding Southeast Asia economy, there is a lot more work to do. Also, which I will address uh, in the next few slides. So the next one would definitely be the next challenge would be the climate change. The climate change impact to the world is not just about day-to-day -day living. It's not just about preserving the environment, but in order to do that, corporations are known to be the biggest contribution to the destruction of the environment. Uh, we don't have a choice, right? If we do not use resource, there's no business to talk about. If there's no business to talk about, there's no job opportunities. So this is inevitable. So corporations have to answer to this. And do better. That is why in Europe they come up with this uh, so-called C-band policy that will address environmental protection, uh, particularly via carbon tax. And as a tit for tat in the world, other country is predictably will come up with similar carbon tax for import goods. So going forward, everybody will be affected, especially for big exporter like Thailand itself. But however, we are also seeing an opportunity in this. For whichever company, whichever manufacturer that are sincerely working towards ESG and environmental conservation, there is no fear. There is an opportunity. You become an early starter that can probably, if we put it simply, be able to export even sooner than other companies which are not as well prepared as yourself. Okay. So these are the challenges and opportunities that we could. Uh, we are learning from our experience in doing business in Delta. So let's address about the global trade tussle first. What opportunity are we seeing there? So how can Thai manufacturers, particularly electronics manufacturers, seize the opportunities? Firstly, we have to, as Thai electronic manufacturers, we need to move up the value chain. We cannot be 
a low-cost manufacturing or rather a low-cost manufacturing country for long because it is unsustainable. It is common knowledge to everybody, uh, most people in the industry, that uh, the basic wages are increasing, labor cost is increasing, labor shortage is happening, a very unique situation in Thailand as a developing nation that uh, we, are we are having an uh, aging generation, an uh, aging population. So labor shortage uh, is, in, is very uh, prevalent right now. And the rising labor costs, as mentioned, and also the, the lack, of, lack of ability to develop high technology product, which is to say that if we still do not work towards this direction of developing our uh, own technology, being innovative enough, then we will be stuck in between. We cannot sustain a low-cost uh, workforce, and yet at the same time, we cannot produce a high-value add product. So that would be a danger for Thailand uh, in the long run. So how should we move out the value chain? We should move up as far as electronic manufacturing is concerned to be a value-added manufacturer. Of course, uh, the reason is quite obvious. First, you are able to innovate, so you produce high-value product. You don't have to compete with the light of uh, countries, uh, neighboring countries like Vietnam or Myanmar, uh, or, or sorry, even Indonesia. <laughs> yeah. So uh, all these countries, big economies, uh, we don't have to compete forever in terms of low cost. It is racing down the ladder. It is not a viable, sustainable business model. Uh, if the rising cost, especially the, rising, the uh, workforce rising income, it cannot sustain this forever. Okay, so uh, in, Delta, it's in Delta, as a case study, we, since more than 20 years ago, Delta Thailand uh, was founded in 1988, yeah, and we built the factory in around uh, early 1990s or mid-1990s. Since the beginning, we have been investing in R&D. Yeah, instead of complaining that uh, there is the government infrastructure is not enough or, or we are not, uh, we do not see uh, there is uh, enough talent, uh, engineering talent here and there. Instead of complaining, we start to depend on ourselves. So our founder saw that vision and we started building up our R&D capability. We also saw a huge abundance of engineering talents here, which are yet to be discovered. Yeah, and over the years of our success, more than 20 years of profitability, uh, we think that we have proven to a lot of countries that they are wrong not to invest in R&D in Thailand. Yeah. And this, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, instead of depending and waiting for structural changes, which will take decades, a long time, we started developing our own R&D capability. We also started to groom our own future talents not just for Delta, but also for the, the society. So as you can see uh, on the slides itself, we built up a power electronics lab in the university. And we started that this year, first one, and we already built seven automation labs in seven top universities in Thailand, including uh, King Mon Kut, including uh, Mahidong, which is coming up, uh, including uh, Chula Longkon, all the top university. Why do we do that? Because most of the undergraduate in Thailand are not taking up engineering. So for us to groom more, to be ready for Thailand 4.0, to be ready for Industry 4.0, it is now. We cannot wait anymore because it takes years to create that, that uh, pool of talents that is ready to move the manufacturing up the value chain, as I have mentioned just now. We also even uh, have the program of Delta Angel Fund, which we work with the Ministry of Industry to uh, discover startups that can help to develop the economy and, and maybe hopefully one day we'll discover a unicorn in Thailand. Yeah. And finally, upgrade and upskill. So we talk about so much about uh, what is lacking, what are the opportunities, but overall picture, we can actually summarize it for manufacturers that there are three important areas that we have to address. One is we must work toward industry 4.0. We talk about labor shortages, so we cannot, we cannot depend on human labor forever. Yeah? And uh, as we mentioned, that we want, to, we want to move up the value chain. So we have to be able to 
produce high precision product, advanced technology. So simply manual labor is not able to do that. Okay, however, does that mean that we are going to employ less people? No. This comes to the next point, upskilling. Like in Delta, as we do automation, we also upskill our staff so that they can manage the technology advancement. Operators become line leader, line leader become technicians, they become an uh, engineering assistant that helps with programming, helps with uh, maintenance, helps with running the machines. So these are what we call upskilling. And finally, sustainable development. Sustainable development appears in everywhere in Delta's uh, business philosophy. And not only sustainable development is important for seizing the opportunities uh, during this uh, great trade war, it also addresses many issues, including the climate change policies moving forward. So that's the reason why we want to, uh, I will elaborate a little bit more on sustainable development. Sustainable development for those uninitiated might think that, oh, it's just another marketing trend. It's just another hype about doing good. A company must do good. A company must look nice, okay, be present. Uh, they must contribute to the society, to the charity. Actually, it's not true. For those who really don't know what is sustainable development, uh, based on the three key principles of ESNG, ultimately, it is for you to have the social license to operate. What is social license to operate? means the public will agree with you. The public will respect you as a business. That's the first thing. Second thing, we can provide value add to our shareholders, meaning to say that we do not just sell product. We sell more than product. We sell them a service beyond their expectation. We sell them a set of values that they can identify with. This is what we call value added. And finally, sustainable development is about making money. <laughs> making money for the long run, but in an ethical and good way that will not harm the stakeholders. That is the ultimate spirit and essence of sustainable development. So we are committed to ESG, sustainable development. This is our strategy. Our mission statement itself, since our founding, in Thailand, since 1988, uh, as we have been established, we have got different mission statements, but eventually the mission statement is always around ESG. Meaning to say since day one, our ambition is to provide innovative, clean and energy efficient solutions for a better tomorrow. A better tomorrow. This encompasses the concept of sustainable development. And because of this statement, all our business product and solutions created, we are addressing, addressing the issues, uh, or rather addressing the solutions to um, solve the issues created by megatrends. All right. And for example, Thailand BCG model, Thailand 4.0, you can call it many things, the first S-curve, the second S-curve, BCG model. All these are actually very similar to many countries. It is all about megatrends. And Delta thus created those solutions that fits into all these megatrends and eventually benefits the stakeholders. Yep. And what are these solutions that addresses a megatrend? You can see over here we have seven solutions. We talk about the four key megatrends that is affecting manufacturers. First one, demographic changes and rapid urbanization, which result in overpopulation and manpower short. In fact, ironically, overpopulation, and yet we have a labor shortage, okay? And then we have a climate change issue, which is another mega trend, and finally, disruptive, dif disruptive technology. And all our seven solutions addresses all these key mega trends. And because of these seven solutions, or rather, these seven solutions are built upon our technology leadership in power electronics, so we, from this power electronic, we built upon three product categories. From these three product categories, we expand into these seven solutions that addresses the megatrends issues. I think most of you are familiar with this EV charging. You can see in central world parking space, uh, the more 
and a lot of condominiums are actually using our EV chargers. And we also have data center, building automation, telecom energy, and also smart energy. Yeah, and industrial automation, which is uh, one of our uh, fastest growing solutions right now. And what is the result? A business has $3.3 billion, uh, a Thai company that is commanding $3.3 billion. We have 104% growth between 2019 to 2022. That is the period of pandemic. And yet, we have growth. Why? Because we provide the solutions for the mega trends. Data center, during the rise of e-commerce during the pandemic, and also EV charging, where climate change awareness was increasing. So we seize their opportunities as what we are talking about today, how to seize their opportunities. Yeah. And over 20 years of profitability. This is just uh, not trying to show off, but a statement to prove that working towards sustainable development works. But like what Kum Marisa mentioned just now, like in a hotel, there's a lot of greenwashing. Company that only approach sustainable development as a way to greenwash we can forget about it. Uh, today's topic will not work for them. All right. And eventually, this are our recognition for our ESG effort. Yep. And we're also using our solutions for good. Uh, we have developed flood monitoring system for our industrial estate. Because of the flood, uh, many people have suffered. Uh, we have created a net zero showroom in the EEC area where manufacturers, uh, potential customers, everybody can kind of take a look how to set up a net zero. Uh, factories. Yeah. Uh, we also open up our green building for government and institution to learn. Uh, we also created a smart farm together with the BOI and the municipality uh, to help the uh, local grassroots economy to grow. And uh, also we provided a DC blower for our medical staff during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we also uh, donated an EV charging station for the Thailand Automotive Institute to help with the learning and the technology adoptions yeah and then uh, we are committed to international initiatives when it comes to climate change initiatives uh, why we are doing that because we know eventually everything comes back to this climate change issue when we talk about global trade yeah as we can see now in CBAM itself and ESG the E itself is a very big part in ESG and we have if we do not address and benchmark ourselves to international initiative, we don't know the best practice. When we don't know the best practice, we do not know how far we can go. So this is the reason that we are always committing to those international initiatives that count. It's not because of the award, but we want to learn from everyone what are the best practices in the world. Yeah. So we don't just talk about it. Uh, this is something very painful that Delta is doing. We charge our self-carbon pricing internally, meaning to say every department, every factory, every office, if they are using traditional electricity generated from fossil fuel, there is a carbon fee charged to them. And because of that, their profit and loss statement will be deducted heavily from that. And we take that money charge, put it into a pool, and give it back to the factory to invest in big projects that helps to bring in sustainable, renewable alternative energy. So we don't want them to just change the light bulb to LED. Those doesn't count. We want them to create a solar farm that provides renewable energy to the whole plant. That is the kind of ambition that we have inside Delta. Yep. So finally, uh, just to conclude whatever I have mentioned today, uh, the time is now. Okay, we cannot wait for uh, government to change. We cannot wait for uh, some authority to tell you what to do. I think from our experience in Delta, we have a vision. We believe in sustainable development. We do not greenwash. So we know the time is now. We cannot wait. We have to create our own independence of capability, our own talents, our own pool of people who can bring our vision uh, to fruition. So uh, this is the message that we have today. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. K. K. Shang, for your valuable information.
And Will, we have uh, some questions for you. What is the biggest challenge in Thailand for, for Delta, in your opinion? Uh, as mentioned just now, I think the talent pool. Uh, I, I read uh, some years back that more than 60% of the undergraduate in Thailand choose to take out social science, humanities subjects and art subjects. So you only left with about 40% or less engineering pool. And inside this pool, you have all kinds of engineering. So maybe only 10 or 20% are actually relevant to the electronic industry. So imagine there are so many electronic manufacturers in Thailand, we get even lesser. So uh, I attended a uh, EEC seminar before, and that is also a big headache for a lot of, uh, a lot of manufacturers in Thailand. Uh, not just us. Uh, that is definitely the biggest challenge for us. So we have to, uh, that, that is why instead of waiting for change, instead of waiting for, for uh, Thai to become interested in engineering, we start to go into university and groom the future talents. And hopefully we do not require them to have obligation to use our uh, sponsored automation lab. We don't. They just go in and learn like a student. But hopefully through that, um, we are able to have the opportunity to talk to them, to, to, to recruit them, to make sure that uh, if we have the chance to recruit them, they already have that knowledge to be in line with us, the skill to grow together with us towards a more advanced uh, uh, product and value-added solutions for Thailand. Yeah. And what would you like to suggest to Thailand for dealing with the global challenge? Suggest, uh, just a sp personal statement, yeah. Uh, I have a lot of confidence in Thai. Um, myself is a Singaporean. And having lived here for 19 years, uh, Thai creativity, I can say, is um, world class. Okay, world class. And I, I believe that over the years, uh, I have seen a lot of crises, the financial crisis, uh, pandemic, every, every time the so-called expert and analyst will come out and say, oh, Thailand will take how many years to recover, blah, blah, blah. Every time Thailand surprised them. So surprise them by recovering faster than before. Like just now, again, uh, Kumarisa's data say that uh, January to September this year, there are 471,000 Singaporean tourists already here. We only have 5.6 million population. That's nearly 10% nearly of population already came here if we think that each visit is by a different person. Yeah. So uh, my, my observation is I believe uh, regardless of what the government policy is, uh, Thai has that creativity, that, that diligence, um, that sense of urgency to make good for themselves. Yeah. Uh, but one point I have to note is also I, I, I find that uh, Thailand is such a nice place to be in. Even the Thai prefers to stay in Thailand. They don't want to step out. <laughs>